One of the cool things about being in a pandemic is that everything is virtual, which opens up so many opportunities for me. I gotta go, one minute. All right, I'm so excited. Let's go to Mexico. Good morning. I'm sitting at my computer. In four minutes, I'm going to click that Zoom link. And where do you think it's gonna take me? During this quarantine or this pandemic in the last few months, I have visited Alaska. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had like a whole list in my head that I was gonna say, but Alaska is the only thing that came out. Um, basically, the uh, one of the cool things, I, it's just crazy. One of the cool things about being in a pandemic is that everything is virtual, which opens up so many opportunities for me. Opportunities to visit like college classes, high school classes, and share about cystic fibrosis. So I've been contacted by a few different teachers um, all over the world now. Um, today I'm visiting Mexico. I think they might be, I, I'm not exactly sure. One thing, yeah, whatever. They're in Mexico at a university and they are talking about nutrition in chronic illnesses and the professor asked me if I could share a bit about CF, my life with CF, and then kind of zoom in on nutrition and CF. So I thought I would just share like an overview and then zoom in on, I was thinking about like, you know, a few years ago, it was about four years ago when my body was really fighting hard and burning a ton of calories and my appetite was really low. My weight was dropping, dropping, dropping. We were like trying to slam down the like calorie shakes. Ugh, it was so, yes. Anyway, I got to the point where I was like, I think a feeding tube might be the next step in order to keep fueling this body so that we can keep fighting this battle. And my doctors and I talked and we ended up on a J-tube. Fast forward, I am so thankful that we made that decision. Not only did it help me be able to maintain or like gain back to a more healthy weight for my body, but also I use it every day to this day. I still use it every day for medication. Um, when I had that horrible virus, we were using it for hydration. And anyway, okay, I gotta go, one minute. All right, I'm so excited. Let's go to Mexico. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor for us to learn about cystic fibrosis through the experience of Mary Fry. Buenos dias. Es un honor para nosotros aprender sobre fibrosis quística a través de la experiencia de Mary Fry. I think I'm just going to start with an overview of what is cystic fibrosis. You know, we hear about it, we read a half a page in our in our textbook sometimes, but really what does it look like in real life with a real patient, with a real person? So cystic fibrosis we think of primarily as a lung disease, but it affects many parts of the body. The main issues or chronic issues that a cystic fibrosis patient will be fighting are chronic lung infections, uh, you know, battling things like Pseudomonas and MRSA, um, different lung funguses and that sort of thing. So these chronic infections um, will be taking so much energy for the body to fight. And you're gonna hear a lot of coughing and there's a lot of therapy equipment and medications and nebulizers. And this is, these are some of the things that make up life with cystic fibrosis, this daily fight. Then there's the gut side of stuff. So our pancreas is affected and the pancreas is in charge of the insulin and blood sugar regulation stuff and the enzymes and, uh, not only breaking down the food, but also the absorbing of the nutrients. The everyday outworking of that is we struggle to maintain a healthy body weight. 
not only are we not absorbing our nutrients from our food, but our bodies are also working overtime just to breathe. Have you heard of the groundbreaking medication by Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Trikafta? I literally just got goosebumps after I said that. Um, so this medication is the first to treat my mutations within cystic fibrosis, the title cystic fibrosis, there are over 1,300 mutations and probably more that we don't know about. So let's call that like, say cystic fibrosis is the big name, but over a thousand different varieties of it, you know? So this is the first medication that treats my mutations. And instead of treating the symptom, I have a lung infection, we use antibiotics to treat that lung infection. No, this drug goes in and treats at a cellular level. Uh, you can study from a medical perspective how it works. All I know is I take the pill and it makes me better. I just, it's, it's a miracle. Hold on, I'll get it so you can see it. You'd think that a medication that helps so much would be this long drawn out process, but it's just three pills a day. So this is just a one week packet of it. So I take two pills in the morning and then one at night. I just have one pill left on this card. So this medication is treating at a cellular level, which means my lungs, which were filled with mucus, way too much mucus. Everybody has mucus, mucus is good but my body had way too much and it was just drowning in it and that's the perfect place for all that bacteria to flourish and grow. This drug goes in and changes the makeup of my mucus and my, like, it makes the environment less hospitable to bacteria. So now my lungs are not drowning in mucus. It's like the right amount of mucus. And so those bacteria are still in there, but I'm not, you probably won't even hear me cough this whole hour. It's like miraculous. So all of that being said, the last year, I've been on this for a year, has been like completely different than what my last 10 years have been. I don't have to go to the hospital every week or every two weeks. I, I can wait months in between. Also, we're living in a pandemic, so we try to stay away from the hospital anyway. I don't struggle to keep my weight on as much as I used to. My body isn't fighting, fighting, fighting bacteria every day, so I can maintain my weight better. I'm not coughing, 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 puking. I can maintain my weight better. So this medication, although it like the biggest thing we notice is that my lungs are doing better, it helps the whole body do better. That was awesome. And they all loved Ollie. He's always a little part of my little Zoom sessions. Um, that was awesome. I loved being there. And um, when it was the Q&A time, some people asked questions in English and some people asked questions in Spanish and then they were translated to English and it was just awesome. So, that was awesome. What? You're on the wrong setting. Are you on the wrong setting? Well, either way, now you can see me. We're getting ready to head out. I like, I'm really excited to get in the car and drive somewhere. We are gonna drop off packages and go run errands. Sounds so exciting. Our first errand was dropping off a few toddler items that we borrowed from church friends. We dropped them back off because my toddler's gone. <laughs> ah. Next time. Next, next time, time what? what? <laughs> next time he comes. Until next time. He'll be here. <laughs> Whatever. Right. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm saying. Um, next, we are dropping off packages. Okay, guys, we picked up some of these uh, stones because we have this tree 
that is, well now I kind of want to reshape the circle around it, but the mulch likes to flow down our yard and we don't like the look of the plastic borders. So we're gonna try to make a stone border around this tree. Bedtime snack time. You guys know how I get corn for my birthday every year. Maryland corn is delicious. And maybe if you didn't know I get corn for my birthday, maybe that makes no sense. We grew up in Maryland and we no longer live in Maryland. So for the last, I think this might be the fourth or fifth year, my mom buys dozens of years of corn and prepares them. It's like blanch, I think it's blanching. So you put them in boiling water for a couple of minutes and take them out and cool them down and then cut them off the cob, cut the corn off the cob and then freeze it. So then I have Maryland corn in my freezer all year. We love to put it in tin foil on the grill. It's kind of a problem. We basically need to buy another freezer for your corn. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. So you're having some late night corn, I see. Yes, having some corn. Ali and I just got back from a walk, and uh, his paw, I think we told you guys a couple days ago. I don't know if ago. we ever told I, them. I think we met, like briefly mentioned But I think it. you cut it out. No, I left it in. Oh, okay, cool. Um, his paw has been like irritated. irritated? There's like no cut. We've washed yeah. it really well and like searched it for like a cut. There's no like cut, it's irritated. Either I think it's maybe allergies or they've been doing road work in the neighborhood and so like ripping up the road and putting new road in. I wonder if like little tiny rocks might have irritated the yeah. skin or something. I don't know, but it it's seems to be doing better. Doing a lot better. So we just have to keep them from licking it, which so. our technique is a sock. Mm -hmm. I put the cone of shame on him. <laughs> He couldn't function. He sat and like, he couldn't function. It's like Harry with a harness? Yes, except worse. <laughs> <laughs> so we just stick with the sock and we make sure he doesn't like it. Yeah, he, he does good. He, he really does. And I know that he knows I shouldn't lick it, but sometimes I have to lick it. So he licks it and I'm like, Ollie, be careful, don't lick it too much. And he puts his head down. <laughs> so sweet. So sweet. Okay, that's our night. I'm gonna eat my corn, as always. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. And good night to the hairy cat. Or the not so hairy cat. And good night to the olive boy. See, he's got a little black sock. <laughs>